Good morning, everybody. If we could uh, take our seats or otherwise uh, get in position, and then we'll get started. Um, you should be up here, Paul. You know, yeah, if we could get the lawyers to kind of come up to the side, that'd be great. Settled out. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Prince George's County and welcome to fire station number 26. Uh, my name is Jared McCarthy. I'm the county attorney and I have the privilege this morning of making the introductions for Prince George's County Executive Rashern L. Baker III. We're here this morning to discuss the ongoing national epidemic concerning opioids and specifically the county's actions that it's taking in response to that epidemic. Uh, starting from my far, or I guess my right, your left, uh, we have J.D. Simpson, who is with the firm of Napoli Skolnick. Napoli Skolnick is a law firm that we retained out of uh, New York. Standing next to him is Arthur Horn. Arthur Horn is a local prominent attorney in Prince George's County, and he has partnered with Napoli Skolnick to provide local guidance and local insight. Uh, next to Mr. Horn is Lisa Jackson. Lisa Jackson is a well-known figure in Prince George's County. She is also legal counsel on this case and partnering with Napoli Skolnick. Uh, standing next to Lisa is, and I'm going to apologize, artist. Hampshire, and she is also an attorney in the county and partnering with Napoli Skolnick. Uh, Greg Wells is next in line. Greg Wells is a seasoned litigator in Prince George's County and partnering, partnering with Napoli Skolnick. Standing next is Paul Napoli. He is uh, of counsel to the firm of Napoli Skolnick and is serving as, at least at this point, lead counsel for us on this matter. Uh, the fire chief needs no introduction. Fire Chief Barksdale will be providing some comments today, as well as uh, the Department of Corrections Director Mary Lou McDonough, and the Health Officer Dr. Pam Creekmore will be providing comments after the County Executive as well. And also needing no introduction is the Police Chief Hank Stawinski. And with that, let me introduce County Executive Rashern L. Baker III. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Um, we're, you know, and many times as county executives um, or mayors, we get the privilege of coming into places like this and doing uh, ribbon cuttings and announcements and good news stuff. Uh, today is not one of those days. Today is to talk about uh, an epidemic not only affecting Prince George's County, but affecting the state and the nation. For the last year, I've served as co-chair of the County Executive of America's Task Force on Opioid Addiction. Uh, we started off that uh, meeting in Buffalo, where we've seen the epidemic rise. Uh, but right here in Maryland and right here in Prince George's County, we've seen it over the last several years increase. And you'll hear from our health officer and our corrections and our fire about how has it affected Prince George's County. Through that year-long um, co-chairmanship, it was determined that we should do something as a county, as counties and as a state um, about this epidemic. Because what we found from the research is that a lot of the pharmaceutical companies misled people, uh, misled them in the addictive nature of what they were prescribing and over-prescribing. Um, it has been a disservice to the nation and a disservice to citizens. And it has had an impact, as you were here today, an impact on dollars and treasure and lives. Uh, for us as a county, many of the runs, as you will hear from Chief Barksdale, um, have to do with um, opioid addiction or fentanyl. Uh, you'll hear from our health department how it's increased our costs here. You'll hear from our corrections uh, department on how our corrections and our jails are becoming hospitals uh, without the resources to deal with this. And then the impact on um, individual lives. So today is about getting justice for the residents of Prince George's County and citizens of this state. We are very pleased that we not only have a well-known national firm 
that's representing us and knows how to go after uh, these bad actors. Uh, but we have local season litigators to help us to make sure that the justice that we should be delivering for citizens is done. And so I'm very pleased that we put together a team uh, that will serve the county well, that will serve the residents well, and will get us the resources to get the help uh, for our residents. Um, in this order, we're going to have uh, the next speakers. I'm going to ask our health officer, Pam Creekmer, to come up and to uh, speak to us, followed by our uh, fire chief, uh, Benjamin Barksdale, and then to close us out, and then um, you will see Jarek come back up here to direct questions. Uh, Mary Lou McDonough, who is uh, director of our corrections. Uh, with that, um, Pam, have you come up. Thank you, County Executive Baker, and thank you, everyone. Uh, from a, a health department perspective, I like to speak uh, in terms of public health. It is absolutely a crisis. Uh, we are majorly concerned because uh, many of the uh, outcomes and the impacts that we're seeing today are directly related to unintended addiction that occurred, um, as County Executive just spoke about, oxycodone and that uh, line of drugs. Um, many were prescribed, uh, teenagers and youth, and uh, addictions have followed. Um, from a public health standpoint, once someone's addicted, it's a whole different conversation. It is not easy to kick. It requires the entire community and collaboration, not just with public uh, uh, providers um, and public uh, sector and private sector. Uh, it is wreaking havoc in families and lives. Uh, so when you, uh, if you, uh, d the deaths are high. Um, in Prince George's County, we are seeing steady increases. Our new concern is that the fentanyl that um, are connected to the majority of deaths uh, is not the pharmaceutical grade and it's a garbage kind of a grade. So people don't even know what they're really taking. The other piece of this is the impact on families. So from a health and human standpoint, we're talking about trauma upon trauma upon trauma. So even if you're blessed to have your lives saved, your loved one is saved, the multiple near misses creates more trauma. Uh, it is a concern and we appreciate uh, what the county executive is doing with regards to this suit. What I will say is in terms of cost, uh, just for the health department, we had to uh, ask for a, a, couple, a few million to continue treatment services here in Prince George's County. We serve the underserved, and without that additional money, we would have to shut all of our clinical locations down. Um, thank you for the opportunity, County Executive Baker. And this is a very serious nature, and every family is and can speak to and has been touched by this epidemic. Thank you. Again, uh, good morning and uh, welcome to uh, Fire Station 826. Uh, the prescription pain relievers, heroin, and synthetic opioids such as fentanyl uh, accounted for 981 overdoses here in Prince George's County last year. The overdoses have caused a 260% increase in Narcan administrations since 2014. That is correct, 260% increase. In 2014, the Prince George's County Fire and EMS Department averaged less than one dose of Narcan administered each day. Compared to today, we are now almost averaging three. It's, it's 2.7 uh, Narcan administrations each and every day for a total of 981 in, in 2017. The impact of this epidemic is felt every day. Firefighters and paramedics deal with this firsthand while we respond to those that are struggling with this addiction. We treat the overdose residents, we deal directly with the grieving families that are asking why, and um, from a public agency business standpoint, we have sustained an increase in opioid responses in an already busy system. Fiscally, we have had to endure a 50% increase uh, with the cost of Narcan, which is the medication that we administer to, um, uh, to uh, reverse the symptoms of a, uh, an opioid overdose. The Narcan costs have skyrocketed since 2014, and uh, like I said, now we pay double the dose. So what are we doing? We're tracking the frequent patients by working uh, with the, the various agencies, with police, health, um, uh, corrections, uh, um, our mobile uh, crisis counselors uh, asking for their help. We're utilizing our mobile integrated health system, which are our community 
based paramedics to coordinate care and referrals for these individuals that have um, addiction. We're training and educating our emergency responders to recognize um, the patient's needs and utilizing referral systems and pathways to get them help. And we're utilizing uh, GPS and other technology to, uh, to track where our, our responses are. Um, but with everything that we do, we will continue to do, isn't enough. This ep epidemic is um, causing a widespread addiction and killing our residents at an alarming rate. And I applaud County Executive Mr. Baker for taking on this monument effort. I'd like to thank County Executive Baker for having us here today so that we can explain the tragedies that we're seeing in our county uh, because of the opioid uh, addictions. Uh, the jail is basically like running a small city. Whatever happens in a city happens in the jail. We educate people, we take care of their medical needs, we do all the things that are done outside of a jail. But we usually see the worst of the worst. And what we're seeing is an uptick in drug use, an uptick in people asking to be put in our drug treatment programs within the jail. We're seeing uh, an increase in severe addictions. And uh, this is something that are, you know, is just difficult for all of us to deal with, for all of our officers, our staff, are all aware of this addiction that is affecting the community at large, but is affecting our inmates and our arrestees at a much greater rate. Uh, so we're glad to have any assistance that we can have uh, to deal with this and to, uh, to appreciate the costs that we're putting out in our medical expenses for our inmates. Uh, one of the real dangers that we see is someone withdraws while they are in jail and then goes out into the community and goes back to the same dosage that they were using prior to their incarceration. And a lot of times this dosage uh, makes, them, makes them become victims uh, of the drug because they're not, their bodies can't take it. So it's a, it's a severe problem and I'm glad to see something being done about it. Thank you. Thank you. Before I have Jared come up here and we'll answer questions, I do want to add on. For the last um, three years, uh, many of us uh, in the state county executives have gone to Annapolis and asked for more money um, for uh, drug treatment and drug facilities. Um, we've also emphasized to the governor and to the General Assembly that uh, you don't need to study this issue. It's been studied enough. What we need is help. Um, what we're talking about with each one of these departments is the inability of local jurisdictions to bear the cost of expanding drug treatment facilities and bed availability, and um, that's one of the reasons that we're following the suit on behalf of Prince George's County. That, Jared? Questions at this time? Who are the targets of the lawsuit? Are there particular manufacturers that you're going after? And could you give us your name and title? Sure, Paul Napoli from Napoli Skolnick. There's, there's generally three types of uh, defendants that we're seeking uh, in the lawsuit. One is the manufacturers, the, both the brand and generic manufacturers are producing the drugs, but also the distributors who are responsible for controlling the flow of drugs within the state. Are there, again, particular brands? Is there like, yeah, a well, name of a lab that we all know? Or? Well, I think the, the, the top of the list is Purdue Pharmaceutical, which is known for producing oxycodone, but there are a number of other manufacturers who have come into the marketplace and done that as well. Uh, Teva, uh, Janssen, and there are several, and if, if, if you want, we could certainly send you a copy of the complaint. Probably a little too long to list. Could, and just to follow up, is this similar to what was done in tobacco, saying that you came before us, you lied to us about what this does, is, is that what you're after, and is that what, are you looking for a specific dollar amount here? Well, the, the tobacco litigation is certainly a model that we're following and pursuing this litigation. Though we think there are other aspects uh, to this, controls that are available when you're dealing with drugs. So for instance, Maryland and the federal government have a Controlled Substances Act that were not followed by these companies. So those are additional tools to help us get a, a bigger recovery, we hope, for the county and the state in tobacco, than in tobacco. To piggyback on that, our cities like New York are seeking 
damages for the like, increase, exponential increase in costs for things like Narcan and sending first responders to help these people. Is there a dollar amount, and is that what you're seeking here, money to pay you back for this? Absolutely, the county is seeking monetary damages at this time, though. We have just filed a lawsuit yesterday, so we are happy to give anyone in the press a copy of that but we have not formulated our exact damages claim, and that is something that will progress through the litigation as it develops and we move on. Um, Mr. Baker, you mentioned that this has taken a toll on the county in terms of dollars. Could you talk about how much extra is the county spending uh, to deal with this? Well, I, th I think um, as you looked at the, um, uh, both from our three departments that talked about this, in terms of dollar amount, we can get you the actual dollar amount, but think of it as the number of runs from our fire department dealing just with the opioid and fentanyl, fentanyl um, the amount of resource that we're spending from our health department that is now going to this increase, and especially in our uh, corrections, in our jail, uh, that we're spending money on in half health aspects that we didn't have to spend, you know, 10 years ago um, or four years ago. Um, and so in terms of the actual dollar amount, that's where we've been seeking. I mean, the biggest part is why we've asked the state to give us more money for expanding um, drug treatment facilities and bed space. Uh, but we can get you the exact dollar amount. If anyone can answer, there was a gentleman I talked to, a Douglas Mayor, who works in emergency rooms in Prince George's County, mainly at Prince George's Hospital. He mentioned to me, this is an end of my that there isn't as big of a place as it is in Baltimore. I don't know if the people wrong about it, he didn't see the figures, but could you explain why he may be incorrect? Well, I, I think, and if I can have uh, the screen. You know, he's correct. So across the state, it's a problem. Across the nation, it's a problem. And so there are certain counties throughout the state where the numbers are much larger. Uh, we don't have to go as far as Baltimore. We can go to Anne Arundel County. It does not mean that it's not an increasing problem here for Prince George's County. So we are seeing double increases over the, the, the last year alone. We track this almost daily. Um, I know that the uh, EMS and police, uh, fire department and police department do. So that was correct. The problem is a lot worse in some other counties and some other states. Um, however, it doesn't change the need that we have an impact here. Yeah. Governor Hogan said he is going to introduce a lawsuit. Um, why not wait for the state? Why, why is next Georgia's county? Does this uh, blunt the effects of what you're trying to do? No, not at all. I, I, two things. One. Um, uh, we've been asking uh, the state and the governor for resources to deal with this issue for the last three years. Um, what we've gotten is a study. And, and what we've said, not just Prince George's County, but other county executives, if you went up to Harford County and talked to Barry Glassman or, or Steve Shue uh, in Anne Arundel County, we, we all suffer the same thing, and that is we need resources now to deal with it. So I think that is why you not only see Prince George's filing this suit, Anne Arundel's filed suit, I'm sure, and I'm not sure if uh, Baltimore County has yet, but you'll see a number of others. Um, because the, the cost isn't twofold. The cost there, the general cost to the state, which sends money down to us. But where the real impact is, is at the local level. Because right now we're bearing at the local level, whether it's Prince George's County or Hartford County or Anne Arundel County, um, the actual cost in dollars and lives are hitting us. Uh, when people go out to respond to this, it's the EMS from Prince George's County that responds, not the EMS from the state. It is the health department from Prince George's County that is at the front line. It is the corrections department at Prince George's County that's on the front line. And so what we want to make sure for the residents of Prince George's County that when the lawsuit is filed, much like in tobacco, which we learned a lot around the tobacco suit, um, Prince George's County had great health needs. Uh, that we didn't feel like we got uh, the resources we needed back here. And so in this case, we want to make sure the residents are protected, and, and that's why we're going ahead. At the end of this, Two more questions, please. At the end of this, where would you like to see the county be? What change do you want to see? Yeah. I, 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 there are two, two things. Is one is we certainly need the resources to deal with this problem. It's going to be with us for a while, and it's going to increase. So the one, what we're hoping from this great law firm and the local um, attorneys that are put together is one, that we get resources back to Prince George's County to prepare, pre prepare for uh, this effect that's going to be for years to come. The other thing is to actually get help to residents who are affected by this. 
and who will be. And so, um, and we need the resources to do it. So what we're looking for is money damages that will help us provide the services to the residents. That's ultimately um, what we hope out of it. I'm kind of thinking back on the last question. Uh, the SPB announced their losses, uh, similar to yours. Uh, is there any coordination or somehow the those influence maybe your decision to file right now? No, I mean, our decision to, uh, to go after this uh, and to file a lawsuit is based on, you know, spending the last year and a half actually working with um, counties around the, around the nation um, and seeing whether, in fact, there was a, a, a connection between the pharmaceutical companies and our ability to get uh, a, a decent uh, lawsuit established. Um, and as for the coordination, um, I think you'll see not only here in the state of Maryland, uh, but in other places, whether it's New York, um, that local um, lawsuits, uh, and, and the, certainly the, the lawyers can, can speak to it better, will coordinate uh, with, the, uh, with the state suits that are going on with the Attorney General's office. I don't know if you want to add anything. And it's part of the reason, folks, that we retained a national firm. Uh, if you look nationwide, there are a number of key players in this litigation. They're all talking to each other, all the national firms are working with each other, and that's part of the, the process we went through in interviewing firms, was to ensure that we had a firm that had the resources, the ability, and more so experience in pharmaceutical litigation, and that's what we think we have here. And with that, folks, I'll be around after the press conference to answer any questions, and also if there's anyone that wants a copy of the complaint, come see me and we'll make sure we get it through the press office to you. Thank you very much, and again, thank you for coming to Prince George's County.